So that leads us to the discussion of when is your rational expression undefined? What happens? Uh, you know, how can you find out when your rational expression is going to be undefined? So let's go ahead and talk about the steps involved in finding when a rational expression is undefined. So you have, uh, the first thing that you would do is you take your rational expression and set your denominator equal to zero. Only your denominator, not the whole expression. Set it equal to zero. Then you solve that equation because you, whatever you have in the denominator equals zero. Go ahead and solve that equation for your variable. Now, the solutions of the equations are the values that make the rational expression undefined, okay? So when you take your denominator, set it equal to zero, and you come up with uh, whatever values, those values tell us our denominator is going to be, or I'm sorry, our rational expression is going to be undefined. So you would not want to um, use those values, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. Now what we are trying to do here is find any values for which the rational expression might be undefined. Now as our steps uh, said, let's go ahead and take our denominator and set it equal to zero, okay? So you can see you form this equation. Go ahead and solve this equation for x. And basically I will start by moving my 4 over to the other side. 3x equals negative 4. Then you divide by 3. And that gives you x equals negative 4 thirds. So basically this says, if I were to go back, and substitute negative 4 over 3 for all my x values in here, my denominator would end up being 0 because we just solved for it. And that tells me we cannot use x equals negative 4 thirds as a part of our uh, values for the rational expression. Okay, so this is the answer that we're looking for, x equals negative 4 thirds. All right, let's look at one more example here. Now in this case your rational expression is 2r minus 5 over r squared minus 5r plus 4. Now as our step said, start with setting your denominator equal to 0. Okay? And now you want to go ahead and find all the values of r, uh, you know, basically solve this equation. Now to solve this equation, you will have to uh, factor your um, expression here. Without factoring, you will not be able to find any values for r. So in this case, you know, you will have to go ahead and basically split your middle term to find the two um, factors here. Let's see. Your first, um, the idea here is what numbers, what two numbers will multiply to give you 4 but add to give you negative 5. Okay, you have to have two numbers that multiply to give you 4 and add up to give you a negative 5. And let's see, if you use 2 times 2, you get a 4, but 2 times 2 does not give you, uh, 2 plus 2 does not give you a 5. How about negative 4 and negative 1? When you multiply negative 4 and negative 1, your product is a positive 4. When you add negative 4 and negative 1, you get a negative 5. So this will work just fine. So you factor r squared minus 5r plus 4 into r minus 4, r minus 1. Now, when you have uh, these two factors equal to 0, that basically means either r minus 4 equals 0, or r minus 1 equals 0. One of the two factors must equal 0, and then when you solve these, you end up with r equals 4 or r equals 1. What this tells us basically is when you take your denominator, set it equal to 0, and solve for it, that tells me the same thing that we saw earlier. If I substitute r equals 4 in this expression, my denominator will be 0. If I substitute r equals 1 in this expression, your denominator will again be 0. 
and that tells us that r cannot equal 1 or 4, okay? Because again, for those values, your expression is undefined. Let's look at one more example for um, finding out when your, when your expression is undefined. Now, if you look at this expression here, you have 4q plus 2 over q, square, q squared plus 9. Now, you can try setting this denominator equal to 0 and see what happens. If you take your q squared plus 9, okay, let's look at that. and set it equal to 0 and try and solve for this. Now if you guys remember from our review we had talked about where you cannot factor a uh, difference, I'm sorry, a sum of squares. Um, what you could try and do is maybe you know move your 9 over to the other side and that would give you q squared equals negative 9 and then if you want you could try and maybe take a square root on both sides to get rid of that square on your q and that would give us let's see q equals plus or minus square root of negative nine and basically the idea is you cannot have a negative number inside a square root okay because anytime you square a number if you take negative three times negative three your product is always a positive 9. You never end up with a negative 9. And therefore, this is not a real number. And you will not be able to find a solution to this. As I was telling you earlier, just by looking at this expression here, q squared plus 9, this is a sum of squares. And there's just no way you can factor those out. So this doesn't work out for us. But what you can try and do here is try and substitute different numbers for your q square. Go ahead and plug in 0 and see what happens for q. Go ahead and see if you entered uh, negative 3 for q and what answers you come up with. And the idea is the denominator will never equal 0 for any of these values of q. And again, you can try working on it. Let's say we use q equals negative 3. So when you have q squared plus 9, you end up with negative 3 squared plus 9, which gives you negative 3 times negative 3, positive 9. 9 plus 9 will give you 18. If you use q equals 0, um, let's see, that would be 0 squared plus 9, which is also equal to 9. And you can try some other uh, numbers if you wish. But again, the idea is your denominator will never equal 0 for any values of q because, you know, the q square will always be 0 or greater than 0. Because anytime you square a number, positive or negative, the product is always positive. So, you know, this value is going to be either 0 or a positive number. And then when you add that 9, you know, that makes sure that your sum will always be greater than zero, and therefore, this expression, this particular expression, is never going to have uh, an undefined value. You will always be able to find answers to this expression.